Okay. Thank you. Thanks for calling and saving me. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. So for those of you who are out there who are maybe just now joining us, um, I had a complete meltdown on the other software, and that software evidently has no way to recover. Um, it just kicks me off, and you guys are cut loose, and I can't get back. Um, that was the good thing about the Google Hangouts. I did have a way to get back. Um, the problem being the way it captured the video and then sent it to you was so poor that you couldn't really see anything. You couldn't see what I was doing. So it was kind of a lost point. So in any event, let me move this down just a tiny bit so I can see the numbers. Okay. So what I wanted to do today is create a pattern for another dog pillow. These are pillows that I've done. This is Jackson when he was a puppy. He's now about eight and he's snoozing over there on the couch. Um, this is Samson. Um, he was with us for quite some time. I don't remember how old he was, but um, this was taken right after several seizures and he was pretty wore out. And he was Afghan and golden retriever. So big hairy mess. Um, Saturday, we lost Mickey and this is Mickey. Um, she was a dog that I be, was watching, belonged to my son, and we were watching her, basically giving her hospice care. And she hung on. She was a good girl. Um, she had a stroke this winter and was having trouble with balance, and it just got to the point where she just could not walk. Um, so we miss her. But my son wants a pillow, so I'm going to hook a pillow for him. But how do you get from this? to a pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and work on it because it's something that I need to work on anyways. And that'll be good for you guys to see. And everybody else who signed up but didn't make it all the way over here, you know, I'll be sending them a replay so they'll be able to see it too. So here's the photograph that I'm working with. And normally what I would do would be to take some tissue paper and put it over it and trace the outlines. Well, some of this is really easy to see and some of it gets a little murky and you really can't see it through the tissue paper because it's just, even though it's thin, it's tracing paper, it's still um, not thin enough. So another option is to simply take a marker and draw on the actual photograph and do it that way. Or if you want to keep that photograph intact so that when you're hooking, you have a full size reference um, to look at, then this is Saran Wrap, very generic. Um, it is professional strength. I don't know what that means, but um, it's just normal stuff that I would use to wrap leftovers. And the stuff is nasty because it tends to cling to itself, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, what I like to use, and I don't always have it handy, although, ooh, note to self, um, this is a time of year to look for it because it goes on clearance. And that would be the crystal clear plastic that they sell to go over windows uh, for insulation. This is the time of year to be looking for that because this is the time of year they're gonna clearance it out, you know, mark it down if there's any still left. So that would be, at least in my area, it probably didn't sell too good because the winter has been very nice. Almost like no winter at all. Okay, well, I've got enough of it to get the gist of it. And you can actually do this in pieces and parts. You can do just part of the face and then move this over and do the rest of the face if you don't have a big enough piece. But what I'm going to look for are predominant features. So definitely her eyes. And I'm going to go in there very carefully. 
and forget that they're an eye. I'm just looking at what's there. And I'm going to mimic these shapes as best I can. Now, her name is Mickey, and I'm sure she got her name because of this little feature. I'm getting a lot of reflection off of that saran wrap. You won't have it with blazing lights on it, so it'll be a little bit easier. And this is where it becomes really important to stop thinking about it as an eye and to think about it um, just as a shape. You know, these eyes are not the same shape. And that's because her head's been turned. And then we got this dark here and we got that cute little eyebrow. Okay, so that's what it would be like on plastic. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw on the pattern because that plastic's driving me crazy. It's too thin. Um, but definitely the plastic that you get for window screening is really good for this particular thing. Her um, pupils are very cloudy. She was, although this was taken uh, several years ago, um, her pupils got pretty cloudy. She had probably some cataracts, made it difficult for her to see. But what I'm looking for is just some general, and I know when I'm hooking it, I'm looking for general shapes and general changes in um, value. And when I'm hooking it, I'm not necessarily going to hook it as a solid line because it's not a solid line. Um, and I'll be using textures to sort of disguise how that works. And then what I think I'll do for next week, I'm really not going to have time to work on this. So what I'll do is I'll save for next week the color planning, pulling the wool and doing that kind of stuff. So you'll be able to see that live as I'm going through the process. Okay, so she's got the nostrils. And dog's noses kind of curl a little bit. You know, there's always this little bit of flesh. I've got a highlight there. We got this must be the lower part of her nose. And then I'm, I'm gonna sort of indicate those white areas. I'll have to look at the photograph later to see what's going on. She does have a pretty prominent split there. And then these are her lips. I have to be careful that it doesn't end up looking, you know, like human lips. I usually don't even draw them on the pattern because of, for that reason, because they tend to do that. I'll use a lot of dotted lines that I may or may not transfer to the pattern. When I'm ready to trace this onto the red dot, it's hard to talk and do this at the same time. When I'm ready to transfer this to the red dot, I might transfer only the solid lines. And then I'll have, well, I'll transfer the dotted lines to the red dot, but I won't transfer it to the fabric. Um, and what that will do is give me a tool that I can use as I'm hooking. I can take the piece of red dot that'll have these dotted lines and put it over my pattern and go ahead and mark them in lightly and then deal with just that section. Otherwise, if I do a whole lot of lines here, it's gonna to be too confusing. The other thing that you can do when you handle the pattern that way is that you can come back after the fact. And for instance, if I don't have enough definition of what's going on down here in her muzzle and I want to know exactly where those colors go, then what I would do is take the red dot, bring it back, make some indication of where they are, then take that over to my pattern and then make that same indication there. And 
And a lot of times this upper part of the collar is not a distinct line because their hair, this is really hard to say down to figure out what's what, because their hair will kind of lay over it. And ears can get weird too. You just got to forget that what you're hooking is an ear and just look for certain shapes. And what I think I'm going to have to do on this one, this is actually where the photo cut off. I'm actually going to have to find another photo of her that has her ears and sketch those in. Because I really want to include her ears. In the, that was such a big part of her personality. As it is with most dogs. So, you know, you kind of get the gist now of where I'm going with this. Um, this is the kind of thing, I'll do this a lot um, for a workshop, but now that I'm not doing so many workshops, I can do it through the mail. I will draw your dog pattern for you. Um, it is important that you send a lot of photos and then we pick the best one to make the best rug. Sometimes your favorite photograph doesn't necessarily make the best rug. So we'll look at things like the size, the dimension. Um, what's ideal is if you have a dog that's laying down and then you can hit, may have a long skinny pillow. Um, that works really good sitting on a couch. So that's it from there. And then the next step is the red dot, which I did another video about transferring a pattern. So it's the very same process. The difference with this one is that this rug is not completely designed yet. So this is going to go a little bit of a ragtag, but it's probably nice to share my process. Um, this is the ugly process of rug design. It's not as neat and easy. I rarely draw the entire rug on one sheet of paper. It gets drawn on many different ones and then they get smushed together. So that's what would happen with this one. And it makes it easier if you can see something without everything else around it. Um, if you're hooking just the dog, get it isolated. And that way you can no longer see like all the stuff that's in your living room um, that's included in the photograph. And it just helps you to sort of focus on what's going on. So here's that. And again, I'll have to redraw her ears, but this will give me enough of a base of an ear. If I could find another picture that's in a similar position, it should be relatively simple to handle. And I'm tracing this with a marker only because I'm too lazy to get up and get something else. <laughs> um, I would normally want to draw this with um, like a flare marker or a pencil or a pen. I just don't think it's going to show up as well on the camera. But what happens is when you use something like that, it um, stays untouched. So by the time you take it to, um, when you take the pattern to your um, backing, then you're in trouble talking and concentrating at the same time. When you take it to your backing, you can see exactly where you've been and where you haven't been. So this nose is really gonna be tough because it's really kind of hidden in there. So I'm gonna try to transfer my marks best I can. And as I'm hooking, you know, I'm looking for just mainly where in the real estate is it located. 
so that I can find it. And then there's a light line here that I didn't pick up. And this will not be, I'm not sure what the composition of this is going to end up being, but it's probably not going to be a floating head. Um, you've seen those. Um, seems to be pretty popular um, to hook just the dog's head and then background all the way around it. It makes me anxious. I don't know why. <laughs> so I'm not going to be hooking her that way. She'll be hooked more. Um, in an environment, maybe with her ears going out into the border um, of it, that type of something along that line. So that's her. Um, I will work on the composition a little bit and then next week show you what um, I discarded, what I've decided to keep, um, and we'll get this pattern into something hookable. And then once the pattern is evolved, then we'll do color choices and we'll go through it that way. Where did you get this photo blown up? The cheapest option. The cheapest option is to do it yourself. Um, there's a lot of programs um, on the internet um, that you can um, upload your photograph and then they will basically paginate it. Okay, this was done on regular eight and a half by 11. I did my room size rug pattern on eight and a half by 11. And then they're just taped. It's just been taped together. Um, that's what that little white line is. It's the edge of the paper. Um, I typically when I was on Windows, I would use paint, you can put your photograph into paint and then paint had a way of printing it. They call it tiling. That's what you want to look for. Um, the Mac does not have paint. Uh, paint is something that was built into the Windows operating system. Um, but I typically will take, only because I use Excel a lot, I take the photograph, put it in Excel, and print it there. What I like about Excel is instead of saying blow this up 50%, I can say make this photograph from here to here 23 and 5 eighths. I mean, I can type in that exact measurement and that exact decimal, and that's how big it'll be when it prints. Um, so it makes it a little bit faster to get to that point. When you're blowing something up, I recommend that you blow it up. You think, yeah, that's about right. Go one step further, blow it up a little bit more, because the one you want to pick is one somewhere in the middle. You want to have explored all the options and You've looked at it bigger, you've looked at it smaller, and this is the one you've chosen. Um, don't just keep blowing up and then quit. Blow it up a little bit past where you're going and then um, make your decision on what the size will be. Hi, this is Cindy Gay. You've just watched a mini lesson from my larger rug hooking course called Making a Pattern. This course and many others to help you through your rug hooking journey are available on rugcamp.com. I also host a weekly live hook-in. This particular video was filmed during that live hook-in. And you can join me there, register for the next one at rugcamp.com live. I'll see you there.